In this video, I'd like to study the DFT formulas, which are shown here. The first one is known as the analysis formula because it tells us how much energy we have in the original signal x corresponding to each complex exponential um, frequency. Another way to put this is um, uh, how much energy does x have in each frequency bin? And that's calculated by evaluating this summation. And then this synthesis formula puts the time domain sequence back together by adding together a bunch of complex exponential signals, each one weighted by um, a complex number, xk. To get some intuition in, into what's happening here in the synthesis process, I've taken a time domain signal, which you can see here on the top. This is actually a flute playing a certain note. And um, you can see that it's periodic, and you can maybe imagine what a flute sounds like as you visualize this. In the middle, I'm showing the discrete Fourier transform. In this case, it's a 256 point transform of the signal shown above. And we can see um, that it contains a lot of energy at uh, some frequencies here, some low frequencies, and then maybe harmonics of those of that low frequency. Um, on the bottom, I'm going to show you the original time domain sequence from the top. And then I'm going to show, uh, overlay, overlaid on top of that, um, some sinusoidal signals, which are constructed by adding together um, pairs of complex exponentials. So let me illustrate uh, what's going on here. So um, in this figure that you see back here at the top, or in the middle, I've, I'm showing red dots on the very largest energy frequency bin of the DFT. And um, if you add these two, the complex exponentials corresponding to these two signals together, then you'll create a cosine. And so that's the cosine that's being displayed down here. And every time I hit the space bar, I'm going to add to that another component in the synthesized signal. So basically I'm taking this DFT or the synthesized signal and I'm, I'm uh, doing the summation one term at a time. So so far all you're seeing displayed on the right hand side is just uh, a, two terms. The two terms corresponding to these red dots that you see here. And then every time I hit the space bar I'm going to add in two more terms so you can see already that just with two frequency components, by adding together only the two uh, strongest terms from the DFT, we are able to synthesize a signal that uh, appears to uh, be similar, at least in frequency, to the original signal. You can see that as they overlay on top of each other here. But let's go ahead now and add in a few more components. You can see that now we're over here adding in the first harmonic component to the signal, giving it some interesting shape. Now we have the second harmonic being added in, and you can see we've recovered a large portion of the shape of the original signal. As we add in even more components, you can see where these components fall. I'm adding the components in in sorted order, from strongest to weakest. But you can see that over some of these periods of the signal, even with only four components, four cosine, or I guess this is five cosine components, we're able to represent the signal uh, over some of its periods very, very accurately. So now I'll just go ahead and step ahead a few times. And you can see on the middle plot what components are being added. And uh, down on the bottom, you can see the effect of adding those components into the sum. You can see that it doesn't take very long before we're able to capture most of the structure of that signal, especially in the middle. There's a few um, differences out here in the tails, but in the center of the signal we're able to reconstruct the time domain sequence very well. And now as we're adding in more and more components, um, it's only introducing modest uh, structural changes to the signal. 
Um, besides view, visualizing this effect in the time domain, we could also visualize it spatially by using two-dimensional transforms of images. Now we haven't talked about two-dimensional transforms, but imagine computing, if you have an image, which is just an, a rectangular array of pixels, if you were to um, compute transforms down the columns and then transforms across the rows, uh, you would basically have a two-dimensional transformed signal. And the synthesis of a two-dimensional signal can be done the same as with uh, a one-dimensional signal like we've just seen. So uh, what I've done here is I'm not showing you the picture. I'm asking you to guess what the picture is. But uh, up here on the top left, I'm showing you what the uh, Fourier transform, the two-dimensional Fourier transform of an image looks like. We can zoom into this. You can see it's not all that informative, kind of noisy and crazy. Um, maybe in the corners there's a little bit more um, structure going on, but still not a whole lot of information present just looking at the Fourier transform. Uh, this picture on the top right is the um, synthesized signal. You can see I'm only adding in one component at this point. The, this uh, title in this figure tells me how many components are being added together. And then um, what I did is I took all these DFT values from the two-dimensional DFT and I sorted them in order from largest to smallest. And um, that allows you to see how much energy there is in, the, in a few components compared with the larger components. I think I'm displaying this on a dB scale too. So uh, let's go ahead and step uh, through. Oops. Let's try running this one more time. Uh, let's try stepping through. And um, as we add more and more components in, you can start to see uh, some structure appearing in this signal, in the image. Uh, but it's not really clear what this image represents or what this is an image of yet. But as we start to add more and more components, maybe you can begin to see uh, what's going on here. So we'll stop on 100. So there we've added 100 two-dimensional cosines together to construct this signal. You might be wondering, well, what does a, what does a two-dimensional cosine look like? And um, to explore this question, um, I've created a frequency space. So um, on the top, this is a two-dimensional frequency plane. And on the bottom, this is a two-dimensional spatial plane. So you can think of the one on the bottom as being the time domain, and the one on the top as being the, the frequency domain. So if I click here, I'm selecting a, a DFT, a two-dimensional cosine with different frequencies. And you can see that as I move my selection, out to the right, I'm getting a higher and higher frequency in one dimension, but, a, uh, but I'm not changing the frequency in the other dimension. So here's kind of a low frequency. This is low frequency in both dimensions. And uh, to visualize what the frequency might look like in a, in a single dimension, a given dimension, you have to slice this picture in half, or, or, or just slice it down the middle, and visualize that signal. So as, as we move across, Horizontally, we go through basically one period of a wave. Same thing is true as we go through uh, slice vertically. We go through about one period of a wave. But um, if we were to click over here, you can see that now as we move vertically, we go through many cycles of a wave over the width of this window. But again, as we move um, horizontally, we still only go through about one period of a, of a wave. So. That's what two-dimensional sinusoids look like, and you can click all over this um, frequency plane and get a feel for what these things look like. Because this is a discrete Fourier transform, and uh, the frequency axis is periodic, so if we go to high frequencies over here, they start to look like low frequencies again. And so in the other example that I was showing you a moment ago, uh, as we're adding cosines together, we're adding um, just two-dimensional waves together to synthesize the signal. Let's go back to this example. And now, instead of um, adding in these components one at a time, I'm going to add them in 100 at a time. 
So we're selecting 100 of these largest components and we're adding them together. So here we are looking at 200 sinusoids added together, 300. Now you can kind of start to see uh, this picture a little more clearly. Here's 400, 500, 600, 700, and so on. And when we get up to about 4,000, you can start to see this picture. It's a well-known painting. And I think I'll stop right at that point. So by the time we've added 7,000 sinusoids, two-dimensional sinusoids together, we're able to synthesize a two-dimensional picture. Let's try this again, but for a different image. Again, uh, I'm going to step uh, 200 or 100 um, sinusoids at a time. So here we are with 1, 101, 200, and maybe right here you can begin to see that this is a human looking at the camera. 400, 500, and now you can begin to see the identity is uh, Albert Einstein. And as we continue to add more and more components together, uh, the picture becomes more and more clear. Let's try this one more time on a different image. Again, adding 100 uh, pixels together at a time. And uh, it seems like we're going to take a long time, so let me uh, let me add 1,000 components together per time step. So here we are at uh, number one. Here's number. Here's a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. This is a bigger image, so it's going to take more uh, samples to get there. But you can see after we've added about 10,000 two-dimensional sinusoids together, we get a, an idea of what this is a picture of two-dimensional grayscale Ansel Adams uh, picture. Uh, let's do one last one. We'll go back to adding these images together, or these uh, sinusoidal components together, 100 at a time. And, okay, there's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and so on. And if we add enough components together, you begin to see our beloved old main. By the time we get to about 10,000, it's uh, taking on quite a bit of clarity, but um, it would take quite a while at this rate to get all of the pixels uh, or to get all of the sinusoids added in because there are approximately a half million of them. So we'll do go ahead and stop that demonstration. Um, again, I wanted to just point out um, how the synthesis and the analysis formulas work. Once again, here we have a one-dimensional flute signal, 256 samples in length, and down below we have the DFT, which shows how much energy is present at different frequencies. And then as we start to add those components back together, we're able to synthesize the original signal again. These uh, MATLAB functions, by the way, are available on the course web page on the Resources tab, so you can experiment with these um, yourself in MATLAB.